In system modeling, there are four things that we often look at. It's the speed, the precision, the accuracy, and the stability. And therefore, in order to, to do this or analyze this, what we need in this first video to kickstart things is to look at continuous system. Alright? So imagine we have a signal over here. This signal is a continuous signal. Alright, because there is no gap in between. Alright, there is no breakage. Alright, for example, there is no breakage over here. There is breakage over here right now. Alright, but there is no breakage over this. It's always continuous. And therefore, in a more detailed way of saying this continuous system is that let's take a look into the zoom in portion over here. If I zoom in into this, this coordinates three and two. So if I were to draw it out, alright, I have minus three and minus two. This signal is represented over here, all right? And we may have maybe two minus 2.5 and minus 2.6 over here. If I were to zoom in out a little, if I were to zoom in again, all right, I will have minus 2.6 and minus 2.5. And then I have another line of it, all right? So it's always continuous. So no matter how many times you zoom in, you'll always get a line, all right? There's no breakage. Alright, there's no breakage. And therefore this is the, the clear cut definitions of the continuous system. And that therefore I will highly recommend you watch this videos and a series of this because it this is how I get these definitions. And therefore this is pretty much um helpful. And therefore in order to analyze this continuous system, what we're gonna use is um, what we call the linear state space models. Alright, the linear state space models by definitions, alright, is simply this one. Right, it's for linear systems, okay? And how exactly this system, all right, this this two equation applies, is if you take a look at the summation point over here. All right, this is called summation point if you still remember. So these two are the summation point. All right, at this first summation point, all right, it comprises of one over s, or perhaps I will just call it x first. All right, x first x times a all right so therefore i have a t x t over here a x all right so the summation point will come into this portion over here all right and then i have a b coming in from here correct to this summation point and therefore plus b t and a input u t and this is why i have that over here and therefore this first equation explains this first summation point. The second equation as likewise is talking about this where this is now the cx ct plus xt because um, we can represent this whole portion over here as x. Okay I'm not going into details on how to derive that alright but just take it home that this thing in the end will become x. This is why they actually show the x over here. And x times c plus plus d, all right, because parallel. This d is also an input. I mean, this d is 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 coming from the input itself. So there is two input actually, all right. So therefore, there is dt ut, all right, dt ut. I clear it out a little bit. And why is it linear? Why are there two paths of inputs? And therefore, in the real world, for example, in um, this might not be the best example, but just to um, convey the thoughts is that imagine we have a cup of water over here, and you decided to boil it. All right, this is one input. All right, and then the other input comes from the wind. Maybe you're boiling in the outside, so the wind may blow, and it may affect how the temperature may be distributed across the water itself. And therefore, in terms of um, analyzing things in terms of linear systems, you can add them together, add the wind portion and the heat of com contributed by the fire itself to come out a finalized um, system um, to analyze in a more accurate way. And therefore, this is the, the linear system is a great platform to actually um, calculate this system. Alright, so therefore, linear is this this um, general state space representations help us to represent a lot of things, 
Alright, so you can add on more inputs. Alright, but in this case, to keep it simple, they actually write in terms of two inputs. Alright, and therefore, um, in modeling, we often know that this is a big chunk of information. We want to represent this big chunk of information by the input and its transfer function. We can often call it g of s and a output. Alright. And this is often called y of s, this is called x of s, or I but just call it u of s, sorry, u of s. Alright, so how do I re re rearrange this thing? Alright, so therefore we're going to translate this, this whole chunk into a transfer function. And therefore this is what we're going to do right now. Alright, and in order to do that, we will use the Laplace transform. Alright, and to Laplace transform this first this first rule of this, I will write this as I write it as s x s minus x naught. So the so the Laplace transform comes from the x dot t. If you still remember, uh, x dot t gives you this one. All right, this is just the Laplace transform, the rule itself. All right, please remember. All right, and for x a t x t and b t u t is just a s x s and b s u s and i can rewrite this a s x s this stuff as a x s and i can rewrite the b s u s as b u s for simplicity's sake all right and um i should all right i should write this as capital x s all right and this as uh, capital u all right because we are doing Laplace transform, everything should be capital. Alright, well, this A, I'll uh, just keep it as capital still, uh, alright? This is some of a um, alphabet stuff, but it's okay. So just take note that this X is in terms of this X. And therefore, I'll just group this X with this X. Okay, when I group this, I would have this one. Alright, I'm simply moving this to this side, and I'm bringing this, this one to this side. Alright, so the minus x0 comes to this side, it becomes x0. The axs comes to this side, it becomes minus axs. I hope this is pretty straightforward. Alright, this is simply um, just what you have done previously. I can factorize, I can factorize out the xs, and I would have s minus, right, um, s minus a is equals to um, this x0 plus bus. Okay? Now, one key thing, important thing, is that this s is for only one variable input. Alright? So if you still, um, just to let you know. However, we can also re-describe this, this, because this is just a, just a general um, equation, we can instead of um, writing in terms of the um, s itself, and now I haven't finished yet. Okay, I haven't finished yet. All right. Although I just Laplace transform, I rearrange the stars. I say that it's a matrix right now, and therefore if it's a matrix right now, then we want to find an equation just to describe the x x. All right. And our purpose itself is to just find the value of um, x s. All right, which is this dude over here, and sub it in, in into. Um, the Laplace transform of this one, all right, and therefore what we're doing now is to do that. Okay, so if you remember for inverse um, inverse matrix, all right, we have a matrix over here. We can actually introduce a inverse matrix to this side, and therefore it's simply right. Just multiplying both sides, all right, by the in inverse of S i minus a. Around this. Sorry, this should be outside. Okay, so I'm just simply multiplying it in this dude over here into both sides. Okay, because there's equal signs over here. Okay, and therefore, um, this will cancel out, and we have x s is equals to. Okay, which is just that. It's equals to this one. Okay, and therefore I'll just pair the like bracket it all right so this is our laplace transform of the matrix all right of of this this xt itself all right this is a laplace transform from this this thing only now we're gonna laplace transform 
this thing. All right, and therefore to Laplace transform this thing, let me allow me, allow me to copy this. And therefore to Laplace transform this dude over here, what I can write is capital Y S is equals to C S um, X S. All right, this is not times. This is capital X S plus D S U S. All right, now I can I can rearrange also as C X S plus um, D U S. Okay. Okay. Now we know that X S is is being described over here. This is what we have derived just now. Alright, and therefore I can just simply suck in this one into XS over here. Alright, into this um, this XS over here. Alright, this is what I'm gonna do right now. Therefore, in order to not let you feel that I cheat your feeling, I'll just write things out. Okay, I'll just do it together with you. Alright, so C, I'll just paste it over here. This XS. Alright, maybe I should just um, copy this thing, paste it over here, and then this whole thing I'll just multiply as xs plus dus. Alright, so I didn't cheat you for any of your feelings. Okay, and therefore, where's my pen again? This whole thing is simply xs. Okay, now I multiply in this inverse into both of this thing okay so if I were to do that I would have this all right I'm just simply multiplying this thing into this brackets all right so as you can see is x naught times this one vu times this one I'm simply doing that right now all right and then I'll multiply all the c or this c into this brackets also okay, okay. now we know that we can see that there is in terms of us over here all right so now i'll just simply um you know group them together as um, us so i have cb si minus a inverse all right and then um plus sorry plus d okay and then this 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 thing is still the same okay so just to rearrange all right just to say again all right summarize is that the first time the first thing i do is to laplace transform this dude over here and i rearrange it's just simply laplace transform sub in the matrix identity matrix because it's multi variables uh, when we have a, a lot of variables right now therefore we write in terms of this matrices all right and next, we Laplace transform this second equation as this one, correct? <coughs> and then therefore, we get this thing over here. And then we, s we know that xs can be represented by this dude over here. And then we hence, we sub in. Sub in already, we will have this, re and rearrange, we will have this thing over here. Alright? And therefore, this thing, what is this thing actually? Alright, let me rearrange and let you take a look in a more better understanding <coughs> so I'll just copy this stuff and these things <coughs> and therefore I'm just simply rewriting into here all right I'm just simply rewriting this equation due to subbing and here and there I'll just write over here all right but just what, what I want to convey over here is this all right this whole thing why is my pen always here <laughs> This whole thing is the transfer function g of s. Right? This whole thing is the transfer function g of s. Perhaps, um, all right, to be more specified. All right, let's take this as zero. All right, why? This thing x zero, if you remember, comes from the Laplace transfer function here. All right. And then we didn't actually specify the initial condition, all right. In this case, let's specify it as equals to zero. So at time, this is in terms of time. So it's x in terms of time. So when time is zero, 
we can just say that it's equals to zero for example it may not be exactly the case but we for for better good sake all right let's say that this is equals to zero and therefore the whole thing becomes zero and therefore I can just cancel this dude over here all right maybe yeah, I'll just cancel that huh? and then okay should be fine right now okay now then I bring this uh, it towards the bottom and then I close it and this is the transfer function alright this is the output this is the input if you remember over in this block diagram itself alright u of s is the input y of s is the output alright so this is the the somewhat the understandings for um, the state space model linear model the one that we have just discussed earlier is for this case continuous time invariant okay invariant time invariant meaning that the a and b c and d doesn't change across time all right repeat again a b c and d doesn't change across time b a b c and d are just some um, you can say matrices it may also be numbers it depends on on things but that they didn't actually change with time they don't change with time all right as you can see in the initial equation we have a t x t correct and then at the end i say that i actually can rewrite this as a a x s all right because i because i don't want to confuse you because so therefore i didn't say anything yet but now i want to say is that we are talking about time invariant all right the a b c and d doesn't change across time all right it's just the whole system changing across time that's all okay therefore by having the understanding of getting a how to get a transfer function based on the stick space model all right if you remember our transfer function often rep are being represented in terms of the the um this form right the, the polynomial b some polynomial divided by some polynomial the zeros divided by posts if you still remember over right here in this section i don't know whether you can see my mouse maybe um yeah i'll just highlight this it's over here all right i think this is pretty familiar to you and therefore by doing looking at this you will know that in the past lessons we know that having this thing we can actually determine how stable a system is all right and this is also the reason why we are talking back into these four things we are talking about the stability alright in the next video we will talk about other stuff goodbye